it's just an honor to be here with you, sir. Well, it's old time. We're old time. You know, I still got the scars on my side. Back side me, that you've carved into me is. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Let me ask you the first question. Why did you decide for the first time to support the Democratic ticket running for president? Well, I think it, it was a fairly easy decision to me because as I explained earlier in my remarks, I'm here and having be in the twilight of a long public service only because of what the military did for me as a 17-year-old in boot camp and then as a 22-year-old young officer in the Marine Corps. That's where the pillars of my life were put into the ground. And I have a tremendous obligation to the men and women in uniform to this day for what they did for me. And I'm going to stand by them and not let anybody denigrate them by say, you know, you're a pile of rubble in the halls of the Pentagon. You're, you're, it's a disaster. Our military is the strongest in the world today. That leads into my next question. Yeah. Is Donald Trump unqualified to be commander Look, in chief? The facts speak for themselves. I don't wish to refer to Trump in any way. This country needs but the strongest, best prepared and experienced candidate to deal with national security from the moment they take the local office on the steps of the Capitol. Senator, a recent CNU poll released this week shows Donald Trump better understands issues facing active duty and their families, 49 to 41 percent. That's 49 to 41 percent. And then Trump would also do more to help vets, 47 to 44 percent. What do you want to say about those numbers? Um, I think if you compare those numbers to the numbers four years ago or eight years ago or 12 years ago, what you would see is that they're actually, we're really improving our hand on the Democratic side in reaching out to military and vets compared to earlier races. But we still have six weeks more to make our case. That's why today is so important, having somebody with the unquestioned credentials of John Warner stepping up to say our national security interests, our military, our veterans, demands that uh, Hillary Clinton be president and commander in chief. And we're going to keep making that case every day. And Andy, I, I say this a lot. I've got a, a child who's a Marine infantry officer, my oldest, who's deployed overseas for the second time. I know Hillary well enough to know that I can say without hesitation, I trust her with my son's life and I trust her with the lives of the two million others who serve in the guard or active or reserve. Uh, but the prospect of Donald Trump as commander in chief scares me to death. Are you concerned that 11% see Hillary Clinton as honest and trustworthy, that those numbers are so low? Does that concern you? Because obviously you know a different Hillary Clinton. I do. And here's the Hillary Clinton I know, somebody who's always put others first. From the time she was a kid in a Methodist youth group in the suburbs of Chicago to today, she's measured her life by what she can do for others, especially families and children. So we have to make that case every day. And I think the contrast is pretty clear on the other side. Donald Trump has not been about others, he's been about himself. And uh, that came through very, very clearly in the debates the other night, and we're gonna continue to draw that contrast. So are you concerned that it's so low? 11% find her not to be honest or trustworthy. I think people have uh, negative feelings about folks in politics generally. But again, what others think is uh, something I can't completely control. But we're going to make that case, and we're going to make it every day. And that character of a Hillary Clinton, who, when they couldn't get health care done when she was first lady, said, OK, we can't, but can we at least try to find health insurance for every low-income child? And working together with Democrats and Republicans, the CHIP program was passed. Eight million low-income kids have health insurance now. That tells you something about Hillary Clinton's character. She doesn't go away. She doesn't give up. She doesn't back down. She fights for what she believes in. Trump is hanging around Virginia because he's looking at these polling numbers. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say to the military community, those who care about national security, about why you guys are the best um, to Hillary, represent this sure. country? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll draw a contrast. Hillary Clinton prepared, as Senator Warner said, by serving as a member of the Armed Services Committee and battling for our troops, our vets, and military families. And she also served as a Secretary of State so she understands to be strong. You have to have a strong military. You have to have strong alliances. And I am an Armed Services Committee member, a Foreign Relations Committee member with a child in the military who's deployed. This matters deeply to me. On the other side, a Donald Trump who says the American military is a, di is a disaster, who ridicules John McCain saying he's not a hero because he was a prisoner of war, 
who goes after a Virginia family, the Cons. Gold Star family lost their son as he was trying to save the lives of others, and Donald Trump ridicules them. He doesn't have the temperament to be commander in chief. Why aren't millennials more on board with you guys? You know, I think actually millennials are strong for us. Uh, we've got more work to do with them, and what we need to do is just make the issues plain. So, Andy, here's what I'm saying. Uh, do you believe in climate science? If you do, you're with us, and the other guys are against you. Do you think women should be able to make their own health care decisions? If you do, we're with you, and the other guys are against you. Do you think we should make college more affordable? If you do, we're with you, and the other guys are against you. These are basic issues. We are uh, in the same place as millennials, and we're making that case. What is your job on Tuesday with Mike Pence? You know, the job is, it's different for me, and you know I've done a lot of debates, but the debates I do, I usually finish by saying vote for Tim Kaine. If I'm talking too much about Tim Kaine, I'm, I'm wasting my time. It is a debate fundamentally about whether Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump should be president. And so I need to make this case about Hillary's lifetime of service, service to others, and contrast it with Donald Trump's lifetime of putting himself above others. With the camera right here, for Bernie Sanders supporters who are not with Hillary Clinton, he said, you guys need to go out and vote for her or she could lose. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that statement and what is your message to Bernie Sanders supporters who are not with you? Uh, my message to Bernie Sanders supporters, and look, I served with Bernie on the Budget Committee in the Senate and we're friends and he ran a, a great campaign. Is he doing enough to help you? He is. He's campaigning in New Hampshire today, he's been in Ohio and other states, he's doing enough. But my message to, to Bernie Sanders voters is, is sort of what I said, we're with you on climate science. We're with you on women making their own health care decisions. We're with you on LGBT equality. We're with you on raising the minimum wage. We're with you on immigration reform instead of deportation nation. We're with you on equal pay for women. The stakes are high here. Hillary and I are with you, and the other guys are against you on all those issues. So uh, let's, let's make the right pick for the country. Senator, thank you very thank much. You. Thank Andy, you. Andy, appreciate Senator, it. Senator, thank you.